questions 1 through 10 on the 2011 Grade 8 AMC 8. Margie bought three apples at a cost of 50 cents per apple. She paid with a $5 bill. How much change did Margie receive? So three apples times 50 cents or $0.5 is how much the cost is of those apples, so $1.50. Now she paid with $5, so her change will be 5 minus 150, and that is therefore $3.50. So number one, the answer is E. Carl's rectangular vegetable garden is 20 feet by 45 feet. McKenna's is 25 feet by 40 feet, whose garden is larger in area. So Carl, that area is going to be 20 times 45, which is 900 square feet. And McKenna, that area is going to be 25 times 40, which is 1,000 square feet. So comparing these, obviously McKenna's is larger than Carl's by 100 feet. That is the difference. So the answer to number two would be E. Extend the square pattern of 18 black and 17 white square tiles by attaching a border of black tiles around the square. What is the ratio of black tiles to white tiles in the extended pattern? Initially, the number of white squares, you have one in the middle, and then you have 16 all around, and that's why it's 17, and they tell you that in the question. Initially, the number of black tiles, they tell you, is 8, and of course you can verify that by counting. Now what they do is they add another layer all the way around like this. And what we can do is we can just create them and then just count the number of additional squares that you add in that new border. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And those, of course, are going to be all black, so put 24 here. So this new total is 32. Now they want you to figure out the ratio of black to white after that is done, and that's going to be 32 over 17. So number three, the answer is D. Here is a list of numbers of fish that Tyler caught in nine outings last summer. What is... What statement about mean, mode, and median of these numbers is true? So let's figure this out. Let's figure out the mean, the median, and the mode. And the mean, of course, is the average of those numbers. So if you add these numbers up and divide by 9, that will give you the mean. So it's 15 over 9 when you add those numbers and divide by 9. The median is, of course, the middle value. So we have to arrange those from smallest to largest. So if I do, I get 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. And the middle value is this one, 2. So that's the median. The mode is, of course, the number that appears the most often. And in this case, it's 3. So this is the mean, this is the median, and the mode. And obviously, 3 is greater than 2. 2 is greater than 15 over 9. So the mode is greater than the median, which is greater than the mean. And of the answer choices, the one that matches that is this one right here, C. What time was it 2,011 minutes after the beginning of January 1st, 2011? 2,011 minutes. Yeah, the uh, AMC 8, like all the uh, AMC competitions, American Mathematics competitions, do not allow the use of a calculator. So you don't really need one, but it always helps, right? But if you don't have one, no problem. This is in minutes, so we have to figure out first and foremost how many hours is this. Well, 60 minutes is one hour. So 600 minutes would be 10 hours in terms of hours. And then similarly, 1,200 would be 20 hours, 1,800 would be 30 hours, like that. So even if you don't have a calculator, you can pretty quickly figure this out. So I want to 
sort of use that. 1800 is 30 hours. So if I take 1800 and subtract it from 2011, how much do I have remainder? I've got 2011. Oh, sorry, uh, I've got 211. Now this 211, I've got to further figure out how many hours. Well, that's pretty straightforward. 180 would be three hours. So I just take 180, subtract from that, and I got 31. So it's basically 33 hours and 31 minutes. So 33 hours and 31 minutes after January 1st, 2001, at the very beginning, so midnight. Well, the first 24 hours is going to be the entire day of January 1st. And then once 24 hours is subtracted from that, I have uh, 9 hours and 31 minutes remaining. And that's going to be the beginning of January 2nd. So when January 1st begins, after 9 hours and 31 minutes, it'll be 9.31 a.m. on January 2nd. And that is choice D for number 5. In a town of 351 adults, every adult owns a car, a motorcycle, or both. If 331 adults own cars and 41 adults own motorcycles, how many of the car owners do not own a motorcycle? So we got one of those diagrams, and let's figure this out. We'll call this big circle cars. All the people that own cars will go in that big circle, and the small circle we'll call motorbikes. All the people that own motorbikes will go in that smaller circle. And I'll call this A, this region I'll call B, and this region I'll call C. So the question tells us that there's 331 people in the town. So all of those numbers together will be 331 added. And then the number of car owners, A plus B, they tell me this should be 351. The total number of people in the town is 351. And uh, the number of car owners, they tell me, is 331. So that's A plus B. And then the number of bike owners, B plus C, is 45. So our task in this question is to figure out how many of the car owners do not own a motorcycle, and that is this number right there, A. So we have to find A. Well, that's pretty straightforward. If we take that equation, A plus B plus C is 351, and then we substitute this guy, 45, we have A plus 45 is equal to 351. So that means A is equal to 306. So that's the answer to the question. So number six, the answer is D. And just in case you're curious, if we do the math for the others, B would be 25 and C would be 20. Each of the following four large congruent squares is subdivided into combinations of congruent triangles or rectangles and is partially shaded. What percent of the total area is partially shaded? So let's just use some numbers. Let's say that each of these has an area of 1 each of these squares. So that means the total area is going to be 4. And we have to figure out what percentage of the total area is shaded. Well, in this one, these are congruent uh, rectangles. What that means is that they're all equal. So obviously, 1 quarter is what's shaded. So 1 quarter is my first value. Here on this one, they have subdivided in first into 4 equal parts, and each of those has been cut in half, or at least one of them. So this is obviously 1 over 8. So that's 1 over 8. And then this one over here, in a very similar way, we can subdivide them all into equal eighths like that. And when you do, this is going to be 3 over 8, because there's 3 of those uh, triangles that have been shaded in. So this is 3 over 8. And then finally, this one, this one is probably uh, pretty straightforward. It's only just 1 quarter that's shaded. So our task now is to add up those guys. That looks like um, 
When you add it up, get a common denominator, top and bottom two, top and bottom two. We get two plus two plus one plus three, which is eight over eight, all over four. And that looks like one over four. And one over four is a quarter, and in terms of percentage, it's 25%. So number seven, the answer is C. A bag A contains three chips labeled 1, 3, and 5. Bag B contains three chips labeled 2, 4, and 6. If one chip is drawn from each bag, how many different values are possible for the sum of the two numbers on the chips? So since there's only a few of them, we can really just write out all the combinations. This is bag A, this is bag B. So if we have one chosen from bag A, we can choose two from bag B or 1 and 4, or 1 and 6. The other is if we choose 3 from bag A, we can choose 2, 4, or 6 from bag B. And then the final scenario is 5 from bag A, and 2, 4, and 6 from bag B. Now let's calculate the sums for each of these. This is 3, 5, 7. This is 5, 7, 9. And these sums are 7, 9, and 11. So what are the different values? Different, well, sums can be either 3, 5, they could be 7, and the sum can also be 9 or 11. And that is obviously five different types of sums. So number 8, the answer is B. Carmen takes a long bike ride on a hilly highway. The graph indicates the miles traveled during the time of her ride. What is Carmen's average speed for her entire ride in miles per hour? Speed is equal to distance over time. The distance for her entire journey is right here. It's 35. And then the time for her entire ride is 7 hours. So they put the 7 in the denominator. So 35 divided by 7 is 5. And that's, of course, miles per hour. So number 9, the answer is E. The taxi fare in Gotham City is $2.40 for the first one-half mile and additional mileage charged at the rate of $0.2 for each additional 0.1 mile. You plan to give... A $2 tip, how many miles can you ride for $10? So the $10 that you're going to spend, two of those dollars is immediately reserved for a tip. So you can only spend $8 on the actual ride. So that means the $2.40 that you initially start off with for the first mile, plus for every additional 0 0.2 miles, you have to pay 0.2. So I'll times that by X, where X represents how many 0.1 mile segments we are going to travel. And this total must equal this $8 that I can spend on the taxi fare. So doing this math, I get 0.2x is equal to $5.60. And then dividing through by 0.2, I get x is equal to 28. So x, 28, represents the number of 0.1 mile segments that I've traveled. So the total distance that I traveled was that first half mile that I paid two dollars and forty cents for plus twenty eight times zero point one mile and this looks like in terms of decimal zero point five plus two point eight and that is three point three so number ten the answer is C